So now we are in the Visual Studio Code, and now we will create a new React tab with the command line, and the command will be the npx, and will the npx, then the create the React app, and now the app name space the app name, the app name will be the front end. So now the command is the npx create React app, and the name of our application will be the front end app, and you have to make sure that the name does not contain any capital letters. So now if I will now hit enter. Then you will see the front end app folder will be created in the directory and it will install the new react app in this folder. So we have to wait till it installs. So guys now here you can see the react app is created here. So if we have to start the application now, so we have to run the command npm start in the command window. So if I will run this command, then you will see the react script starts and it will start the application in the localhost 3000. So guys, now you can see the React app is here. So if I will now go to the Visual Studio Code now, so if I will have to see the folder structure here, so first there will be the node modules and the node module contains the packages which we have to install or which will install the packages with us and the second one there is the public. Public folder contains the HTML file and the React app contains only a single HTML file in it. So there you will see the div id equals to the root and we have to perform all operations on this div in the single index.html5 and it will contain some logos also like fab icon and all and there and the next there will be the src folder and the source folder contains the main components like index.js is the main javascript endpoint and it will contain the single app application like the single app component which is the main component in which we render all the components and all so it contains only the single component here so so then you will see it will render this component into the document.getElement by id root which we saw in the index.html there so it will be there and now the source contains the main components also so it will contain some components folders and all and after the source there is a git ignore file so we have to ignore some packages like node modules and all and the package.json and the readme and the package.json contains the uh, repository for our application and the name is the front end app the version is the 0.1.0 and and all of the details of our application so guys this is the folder structure so guys now we have to see the development of it so first we have to go to the source and if i will now go to the main app.js which is the main file i will now delete from the header and if i will now render only the high here or it will contain the s3 this is my application so if i will now save then you will see there will be some errors in the console window that we have imported this and all but now there is no any errors so if i will now go to the main app this yes, so then you will see this is my applications here so if i will now remove some files like import the logo from svg if i will now remove this and if i will now remove some files here like the setup test.js the uh, report web vitals index.logo.svg so if i will now delete these three files and if i will now delete one more file which is the app.test.js if i will now delete this and now we have to go to the index.js file and there it is importing the report web vitals so we have to remove this line and and it is a report vitals so we have to remove this also so if i will now save then you will see uh, logo.svg is there so we have to go to the app.js so guys now if i will save the application then you will see there will be no any errors in the console window so guys now you will see this is the default layout of react app so now this is containing the middle of the web page so we have to go to the app.css also if i will now remove these files like app.css if i will now remove all of these and if i will now save again then you will see if I will now go to the index.css file also, if I will now remove this or if I will now give the margin here to the star like the star and the margin and equals to the zero. So if I will now save then you will see this will be the default application with the react. So if I will now save then you will see now this contains no any empty spaces and margins at all. So this is the default app now. So now we have a default application so, and now we will create some components and about the components the components are the independent and the reusable building blocks of a react application. So the elements of the HTML like the header the div elements and the product pages now will contain its sound components. So now we will create some components so we have to create some files in the source folder. So in the source I will create a header file to the header .js and it will contain a css file also like header 
dot css and then we have to create a products file so then it will be the products products dot js and the next file will be the css file of products and products dot css file so now the product file will contain all the products by calling the product api from the backend and now we have to make another product file and it will be a single product the product product dot js and it will contain css file also product so now the product dot js and the product dot css is there and now we have to create a one more component and it will be the home component in which we can add products to the database so it will contain the home home.js and then it will be the home.css again so now first we will configure the header of our application so we have to go to the header.js file and now we will import the react from the react and we have to create a component function and it will be the and now it's a arrow function here and the const header equals to the function and now the return statements with the div inside and the export default like header and we have a default export of the header and now we will import the header in the app component so now we will install some packages here and it will be the outer package from the react and it is a react router dom so if you go to the google and you type react router dom so now you will see there will be the very first link of the react router see that link and there is some steps about it so you can just directly copy the npm install command from that and i will just copy it and i will just paste here in the command window so i will create a new terminal so then we have to go to the directory so the npm install react router dom and we have to wait till it installs and till then we can just create them css files so now the div and now i will remove this div and i will create a header header and now the header will contain a nav tag with a class name of the header nav and it will be the nav dot and the class name will be the header nav so so now in the nav and now it will contain a ul inside it to create a header and to create some links of the ul so it will contain a unordered list within it so it will be the ul and the class name will be the header ul and now in the header ul it will contain some links element with the alis with the ally and it will be like the home and then it will be again the ally and it will contain the product so if i will now save and if i will now go to the main app component so main app.js so first if i will now import the header component there so it will be the header like app.js instead of this h2 and i will just import the header here to header and it will import the header so now you will see the header is now imported here so if i will now save so then you will see the application contains some headers now you will see the home and products are there so if i will now go to the header tab like if i will now go to the main header file and if i will just go to the css file of it like first i will import the css import so it will be the import header.css so so now we have to go to the css file of the header and first there was a header tab it is header header nav and it will contain some background color that will be now the blue so then if i will now save then you will see the background color will be now blue of the header so now we have to do to the ul so it will be the ul like header ul and the ul will contain display as the flex so now the display is flex and now it's a part of the css flex box so about the flex box the flex box is a one dimensional layout method for arranging items in the rows or columns and it is a new way in the css so now we will contain the flex box here so now in the flex box first we will define the display as flex so now we have already defined so it will now contain so if i will now save then you will see it will contain in the line so now we will give a property of the flex as the justify content and to the flex start so if i will now save then you will see the content will be the same in the line like home and products so now we have to give here the li like we have to now design the li inside it so now here header ul and it will contain the li tag inside the header ul so it will contain the padding of the 10px and now it will contain the cursor to the pointer and now if i will now save then then you will see the padding is there and the cursor is there so if i will now move over it then you will see my, my mouse and it will act as a link now we have to define here the color 
if I will define the color as the white, the white. So if I will now save, then you will see the home and the products here. So now if we can define in the, in the li like a list style type, and now if I will give a value to the none, then you will see there will be no more disk inside it. So now you will see home and products are there. And now there are no more the dots inside it as we see in the unordered list. So we can give a new hover effect also like the ul and li header ul and then giving it a li as a hover and the hover will contain. So whenever we hover over it and it will contain the background as the white and the color will be equals to the dark blue. So if I will now save, then if I will now go here, so then you will see now home and the product. So now you will see whenever I will hover over it, the background is a home equal to product equals to. So now we have now created our header. So first we will build a product component with that. So, so now we have to go to the product component in the products file. So we have to go to the products or JS file and now we have to import the react. So now we have imported the react from here and now it contain a return div in the products function. And so now we have to create a new products file. So now in the products, we will be the layout of how our products gonna look in the web. So I will create a dummy object here. So first it will be the cons dummy products and it will be equals to an array of objects and the objects will contain the ID or just the name of the product first the name like it is like a mobile phone and it will contain the image so I will pick the image URL here with that image URL and then it will be the price and I will pick the price at the uh, 20,000 and then it will contain the uh, description and the description will also contain some string like this is a uh, new and this is a new mobile phone and it will contain the description and then in the end it will contain a quantity and the quantity will be equals to like the like 12 quantity we have so this will contain the array of products and I will just copy and paste these products one more time like now we have a three products and now inside the products component first we will create a div like div is already there and I will give it a class name as a main as a main and then in the main div and then we have to render the ul and the ul inside the ul we have now to render the ul here and the ul will contain every li so in the li we have to give a new product and now we have to just map through the dummy products like now we have the dummy products array like here are the three products and then we have to give every three products to the product component so for like we can do with the map because the for loops are not allowed here so it is a map dummy products dot map and the map function contains a callback function inside it so we have to provide a function and then it will contain an arrow function and it will contain the iterator here and the iterator will be like the single product product and now it will contain the key also with that because we need to define a key also with that so the product will contain every product and now in this set we have now to provide a new li inside it every time it will contain the li the li and the li will contain a key and equals to the index and then it will contain a product the main product component and the product component first we have to build like this and this will be the product component so if we can create just a sample product component by this so now this will be the sample product component. So now we have to go again to the product.js file, products.js file. So then it will contain a new product inside the every li product and it will contain the props here. And now props are used to send the data between the components. So we have to use here the props. We have to provide here the name of the product like name and the name will contain like a product.name. So it will contain the product.name and then after the name it will contain the image and the price will contain and it will be the product dot price and we have to provide an id also and it will contain the id first so then the product and the id equals to the like if we provide a sample id with the key also so we can provide also like id will be the key with that 
so now you will see now we have a new product with the details so if i will now save and now it will contain the every ally so we have to show the products in this page from the product component from this product component so then we have to build this this product component now so we have to go to the product component and type just now receive the props here from that so first if we are giving the props from the product.js file products.js file so now we are giving some id prop the name prop the image so we have to get here also and so now in the function parameters we have to define the props it will contain the props and then it will contain the products also so now we have to define every product now here so then it will contain some the div and now the class name equals to the product main and it will contain uh, image first like the image the source will be equals to now in the expressions so now we can get the image from the props like we are sending the image from this like image so we can and then we can type the props dot image and the alt will be like and it will be like the uh, props dot name of the product so the image is there and now after the image it will contain a new uh, it will contain a h4 element and it will contain the props dot the name of the product and then the description we can hide us so now it will contain the p tag with the price it will be the props dot price and now it will contain the button so now buttons to delete and add it to delete and to edit the product so if i will now save if i will now go to the products.js file and we can enter the products in the main app.js file so if i will now go to the app.js file and if i will just import the products.js file there so it will contain after the header it will contain the products so if i will now save then i should see the products like index is not defined we have an error in the products for the like products like the index is not defined like key the key will be equals to the key this error so it will be equals to the key so if i will now save then i should see all the products there you will see the mobile phone this mobile phone see so now you will see all of the product components all the single product components are working now so now we have to make an alignment now so first we have to go to the product.js file and we have to import the product.css file so import and it will contain the import statement as product.css so now we have to move on to the product.css and then we have to define some stylies so the first it contains the product main so we have to copy and then if i will give a new class name with that and then if i will just provide a new padding with it and it will contain the padding of the 10px so if i will now save then then you will see there will be some padding around the components so then you will see there is some padding behind the layouts so now we have to define some more styles with it so if i will now define here a new card inside this so so it will be wrapped inside a new div so after the product name if i will define a new div with a class name of the card and then if i will just wrap these divs into this card so then if i will now save then everything would be the same but if i will now go to the product.css file and if i will now define the style for for the card and it contain the card and the margin will be the 10 pixels around it and it will contain padding again and and it contains the 10 pixels in it and it will contain the width of around something if we provide a width of around 300 pixels or if you provide for the 250 px so it would be the width and it will contain the height also the height of the card will contain the 250 px and it is the same now so then the width equals to this and if i will just define a box shadow so box shadow will contain the first 5px from the down 5px from the up and the 10px is the blur and it will contain the shadow of the css color the shadow of it and it will contain the ccc so the shadow color will be now the ccc so if i will now save then then you will see all of these products will contain some shadows and the products inside it so then you will see it is now merged so if i will now go if i will now just define some headings with that so if i will now define here the style for the image inside the card so it will contain the image like card and it will contain the image so then the align content of this with a center in the uh, in that in the card 
and it will contain and it will contain margin of the five pixels so if i will now save then you will see we'll say there is some content in it if i will now define the size of it also like the width of the image is equals to the the 80 percent of the parent div and it will contain the height of the 50 percent of the parent div like 50 percent of the 250px so if i will now save then you will see the product is now here now you will see this is now a new card so if i will now define a more style with the image because now the image is not good so if i will now provide the style for the image like the width is equals to the like the 90 percent and the height will equals to the 50 percent so if i will now save then then you will see the card now so then you will see now the card is looking good here so now the image is there the name is there of the product the price and and two buttons are there so if i will now define here some styles with it like if i will now define here the border style with it like the box or like a border radius five pixels inside it and and it will also contain that so if i will now save then you will see image borders are there also so first the image is now configured and then we have to style the h4 div and now we have to define the h4 so it will contain the card and it will target the h4 element and now it will contain the margin of the five pixels and it will contain the padding of the five pixels again so if i will now save then you will see the margin and paddings are there so then we have to target the card and then we have to target the p element with that so it will be the p and it will contain padding of the five pixels and it will contain the font family font family of the like this so if i will now save and you will see all of the design is complete so now we have to go to the products.css file and we have to import the css here also in the products.js and now we have to define some styles here and it will contain first the ul and the ul will contain the display as the flex so if i will now save and you will see all of the items now will be in the row and the flex direction and now we have to define here the align items so the align items will be in the in the center so if i will now save and you will see there they will the center aligned in the all of the elements so now we have to define here the flex wrap and it will contain the wrap inside it flex wrap and we have to give a value as the wrap so it will wrap all of the content inside this diff and then you will see now this is the disk coming of the every list before the every list so we have to style that and now the li will contain the list style type and it will contain the none so if i will now save then you will see the disk will not be there for any list so now we have to define the some things like after this card we have to define here the hover effect also and for the hover effect and it will contain in the products.css file product.css file and it will contain like the card and it will contain hover and we have to define here the box shadow will be the double now and now the box shadow will be the double as we define this so now it will be the double so if i will now save and if i will now give the value of 10 pixels and again this to the 10 pixels and this will contain the 20 px 20 pixel so if i will now save then you will see the hover effect will be there on every card here so now the card design is completed and now we have to fetch the card from the database and now for the fetch we have to go to the products.js file and we have now to remove this dummy data and now we have to fetch the data from the database and for that we have to move on to the database and then first we have to go to the backend that we have built and now we have to open the server here in the backend so then you will see i have already opened the backend here so now we have to move on to that and then we have to provide a request here and it will be new http request for that so now we have built the layout of how our products gonna look and now it's time to fetch and show the real products that we have in the database so i have added some products in the database and now we will fetch all the products from that and now for this we can use the axios also which is a third party library to make http request but we have an alternative for that which is already available in the javascript the fetch function from the javascript and about the fetch function it is used to make asynchronous http request and api calls to the backend server and it always returns a promise object and we can use the then and catch statements after it so now we will see about the fetch function in that 
so now we have to go to the products.js file with that so we will use the use effect hook with that and now with that we have to import the use effect hook here for that it will be import the uh, use effect from the react and now I have imported that and now we have to use here the use effect hook so now we have to go to the products component and about the use effect hook the use effect hook is used to run a part of the code whenever the component has been rendered and it takes two arguments and the first is the function which we want to run and the second it takes the array of dependencies and the dependency array it can be a variable so whenever the variable will change it will rerun the use effect hook code inside it and example it can be used in some counters that whenever the count will change it will run every time once the count will change and if we do not specify any value in the dependency array then it will run only once whenever the component is loaded so now we will use the use effect here so we have to create a use effect here use effect and first we have to provide a function and it will be a callback function with that and it will be in the curly braces then as a second parameter it will take an array of dependencies so about it so now we have a use effect function and now we have to create an asynchronous HTTP request with the fetch function so first we have to create a function inside it and it will be the const like fetch handler and the fetch handler equals to an async function async and it will be a function and then we have to create a await and then await and then the fetch so the fetch will take the URL here and the URL we have to go to the backend server and, and we have to open the server here and now you will see it is open on the localhost at the day 5000 so we have to create the request at the localhost 5000 so we have to go there and, and it will be HTTP localhost at 5000 and the fetch takes a second parameter as an object and the object we have to specify some methods but in the get request we don't have to specify any methods here so we have to directly skip this part so I will just make a request with the database and it will send us the products and then it will return the response and then we have to respond so we have to use the other then as it returns the promise so then it will return the response and we have to convert the response to the JSON to use response.json and then after converting the response to the JSON and now we have to get the data and so I will use another then and it will take the D as a parameter or the data as the parameter value and the data contains in the products so whenever we make the request to the backend it will send us in the data dot products so we have to get here the data dot products so to store this product sales we can create a new use state hook with that and the use state is used to build a stateful logic for the functional components inside it so we will use here the use state so we have to import the use state first so we will import the use state from the react and after the use effect i will import the use state and then we have to define the use state here and the const and it will be in brackets and then first it will take a variable in it so the first we can define a product and then we can define a second parameter as the set products because the second parameter will be the function which will update the first parameter value so after this it will contain the set products and it will be equals to the use state and the use state will contain a default value or an initial state so we have to give an initial state and we know that this function batch function will return an array of objects so we can define here an array and now we will use it directly in that so then so in the then statement whenever we will get the json in it so we will just set the products in it like set products and the set products will be used and then it will contain the data dot products as we will get the data in the products so in the then we have specified that so after the set products so the catch and it will contain an error parameter so whenever there will be an error so we will just console.log the error in the console.log the error so if I will now save and if I will now run this function in the fetch handler in the use effect so it will be the fetch handler and and after the fetch handler if I will now just console.log the products which we have stored in the use state now so if I will now just console.log only the products so it will be so if I will now save then you will see if I will now go to the Chrome in the developer tools so if I will now refresh then I should see the products here but 
there is an error that uh, request failed access to fetch so now this is the course errors no access control always in heller is present to the requested response so to fix this error we have to go to the backend if i will now clear the screen now we have to install a new third party package and it is a course so we have to install the course and pmi course so if i will now install the course it will solve this error because it is now coming for the security reasons so if i will now skip the security part here and if i will now import the course here in the app.js file so if i will now import the course like const course equals to the require and the require will contain the course inside it so if i will now save and if i will now go to the middleware part and if I will now use just the middleware, so this is not a middleware. So if I will now copy this, if I will now paste this, so if I will now use the other course first, so it will be the use app dot use, and it will be the course. So if I will now save, then if I will now send the request again in that, so if I will now send the request again, if I will now refresh it, then I should see the products in that. So now so the thing is that we are now logging the products in the use effect hook and now if i will now remove this from here and if i will now paste this after the use effect hook and if i will now use this and now if i will now save then you will see the products are there in the console so now you will see the id the name properties of that are there because now the use effect hook will run after the component is rendered so the products will now be blank so that if i will now use the products whenever the component will be re-rendered then we will get the products in the console window so now it's time now to remove the dummy products from here and if i will now use here the actual products from map so if i will now save this from the actual products so then you will see now we have the products so now we can fetch the products from the database and we can display it to our site and now it's time to build the add functionality but before the add functionality first we will make a routing functionality and then we will make a add delete and update operations with all products ids in the urls and all so we have already installed the react router dom and now we have to go to the top level api of the react and we have to wrap the app component with the browser router in the index.js so we will go to index.js and now i will import the browser router from the react router dom so we have to import import and it will contain a statement after this import something from and it will contain the react router dom so we have to import the browser router here so it will contain the browser router and then we have to wrap the app component with the browser router so we have to wrap this like browser router and if i will now say so now we have to go to the app.js and now we have to implement the app functionality so now we have to implement the router functionality with app.js so first we have to go to the app.js and then we have to import something from the react router dom and it will be the switch and then we have to import here the routes then we have to import here the redirect so about the switch switch is used to switch between the multiple pages and the route is used to create a route with that and the redirect is used to redirect one route from the another route so then we have to use here this so the header will be used everywhere in the app so we have to use here the everywhere and after the header if i will now create a new route with this switch so first we have to wrap it inside the switch so the switch will contain the route functionality inside it and now to contain a route we have to give a route and first it will take a default route and we have to provide here the prop with the path and we have to define the path to the default path with it so we have now defined the default path and now we have to give here the functionality like for the default we have to go here the home so the default functionality will to the home page so if so if i will now import the react here like if i will now use here like this is home so if i will now save and and if i will now import this in the app.js file like this if there is a default path so we have to import here the home file so we have to import here the home so if i will now save then i should see like this is the home so now this is the default so if i will update this so now you will see this is the home but there is a products is also coming there because now we have to implement here the exact because now now the products will contain from the local of 3000 and slash and the products so now it will contain the same route like it is coming from the local of 3000 and then the slash which contains the home and it contains the products so it will show the home and the products both 
so we have to use here the exact like if this, this is the exact path then then only we have to show the home so we have to use here the exact so if i will now use here the exact only so if i will now save and you will see there will be no any products there with that so if i will now remove the product from here so then you will see there is products coming because we have now not defined the products here so to define the product we have to define another one with that like if i will define another route with that like route and it will contain the path to the products it will contain to the products if i will now wrap the products inside this path inside this path and if i will now use here the exact to then if i will now save so now you will see this is the home route and now only the home is showing so if i will now go to the products so then you will see there will be the products in that so now this is how the router functionality will work so then we can implement the steps with that now if i want to use here the products functionality with the default route so for that first we have to use here the redirect like if i will now go to this route and this will redirect to the products so if i will now remove the home for here and if i will now create another route for the home so it will contain the exact and that and it will contain the home so if i will now use here the home for that and for the default route we have to just redirect the path from the default to the products and we have to show the products in the default page so it will contain like the redirect which we have imported from that and the redirect will contain a two path inside it and it will contain the products so it will go to the products path and then if i will now save and if i will now just close the tag so if i will now save then it will go from the default to the products and whenever it will go to the products it will show the products component so if i will now save then you will see if i will now remove the products from here so now you, you will see if i will now go to the default then it will go to the products here so now this is how the redirect functionality will work so now we have to make sure that these links are working now so then we have to go to the header and then we have to import here the nav link from the react router dom so i will import it now and now we have to wrap this li from this nav link so it will contain the nav link and it will contain the prop as the two so it will contain the two and it will be equals to the home so then from the home it will go to the home and now we have to just close this nav link here and then we have to wrap the li with it so if i will now save with that if i will now save then you will see if i will now click here to the home then i will now go to the home so if i will now remove this if i will now click here the home then it will go to the home tab so now we can see the home tab so we have to do the same for the products also so it will contain the nav links to the products and with the two prop and the two will contain to the products and now we have to just close this tag so then we have to remove here the tag and we have to use here the nav link and then we have to wrap the products with the nav link element so if i will now save then i should see if i will now click the products then i should go to the products and if i will now click to the home then i should go to the home and without refreshing the page so this is how the react works and now this is how the react router dom works so if i will now provide here some style with it so we have to provide here a style like ui li and the li will contain and the li color will be like it will contain the color as white so if i will now save then i should see the color equals to the white with that and the text decoration with the li will contain as the none so if i will now provide a class name to it so it will contain a class name as the like a link item or like the link and it will also contain the class name as link and if i will now define the style for it like the link here and it will be the class of the link so if i will now save and you will see now the product is equals to this and now we have to implement the add delete and update operations with that and for that we have to provide multiple routes but we will do it later now so now in the home component we will now create a form for the add component so it will add the products to the database so now we will implement the add product to it so now we will create the form to add the products to the database so now we can use the material ui form so we will go to the material ui and then we can install the material ui from this command so i have already installed it so you can install it from this command by copying this command and you have to paste in the terminal and then you have to hit enter 
and now I will go to the components. So I will select here the text field component and I will copy the text field from that like this outline this here. So I will copy and I will go to the home.js. So now we will create a new form tag with that like form and then we have to remove the action from that because we will define the on submit here and I will just paste this text field component from that and we have to import the text field from the material UI. So we have to type the import this from the uh, material UI and it will be the MUI material and then we have to import the text field so it will contain the text field so if I will now save you will see now we have the outline form here so now we have to design the forms but before that I will copy this text field multiple times so I will copy this like we have some fields in the database copy this like now we have the four fields so now you will see there are some forms in that now we have to give a class to the form so to design the CSS with it so we have to give a form as a class class name will be equals to the like form control and then we have to use here the form control class in the home.css file so we have to import the home.css and then we have to create a home.css also with that now we are in the home.css so I will copy this class and now we have to style this page so now to style this first we will give a style of the display and the display will contain this time and it will contain the display as flex so if I will now give the display flex it will be the same in the leg so now you will see it will contain the flex box with that so now if I will define it as the flex direction to the column like flex direction so now you will see there will be in the lines so if I will now save then you will see outlined outline so now they are in the lines and now we have to define it as the align content align content to the left so then you will see it will be aligned to the left of the page it is now aligned and now before that if I will now give the style to the parent element like this is the home like class name equals to the home and the add or like this is the home class so if I will now define the home class there also so it will contain the home before that we can define here the margin of 10% from all the sides and here we can define here padding of 10 pixels like from all the sides so if I will now save it then you will see it will be in this line so if I will now define here some more content like if I will define a border so it will contain the two pixels from the uh, solid and and the color it will contain the hash ccc so if I will now save then it will contain the border from all sides so now you will see the border is there and the border will contain the radius in itself so it will contain the border radius and it will get the 10 pixels so if and now we have to give a margin between the forms so in the text field then we have to give a prop and it contain the margins so we have to define here and it will be equals to the normal so if I will define as the margin equals to the normal to all the forms here so if I will now give this if I will now copy this and if I will now paste it here also uh, here also and the here also so if I will now save then you will see it will contain some margins between the forms so now you will see it contains some margins within it and now we have to define here a uh, number field so to get the number fields first we have to go there and we have to grab the number field now so now you will see this contains the number field so we have to grab this field also so select on the source and you have to grab the number field like this contains the number like text field id equals to the number so copy this and you have to paste here the number field here so if i will now save again then you will see this will contain a number also so now we have to define another checkbox also because of the is featured field in the database so to define the checkbox first we have to go to the checkbox and select it so we have to select from this like we have to select from that from the components here so now you will see this contains a checkbox here in the components so go to this and you have to select a basic checkbox for that so if I will define a label here so it will contain a form group and then it will contain the form control label and all so if I will now select this from that if I will now copy this so then you will see if I will now go and if I will now paste so then you will see and then we have to import the form control label also from the material UI so select this and it will auto import between this so we have to define that and now if I will now save again then you will see this will contain the checkbox also so if I will now reload and then we have to wait till it compiles it and we have to import the checkbox also from that so you have to import that and it will auto import from that so if I will now save again 
so then you will see it will contain the checkbox in the form also so then you will see it contains now the checkbox also so now all of the fields are defined like the name description the number and the price and the quantity and all so now it will contain all the fields in the database so now we have here to give the name to every field here to get the value from that so we have to provide a name and it will contain like it will contain the product name and this will contain the name as the uh, description as the description and now this will contain the name as the price and this will contain the name now as the quantity and this will contain the name as and it will be the as is featured so we have to define the name as is featured in that is and now we have to define all of this field in the view state so now we will use here the use state to get the values of these forms from that so it will contain the use state so like we have to define here like the inputs and we have to define another set inputs so the set inputs will will update the value of the inputs and and in the default first we have to define the initial values to all of these input fields so it will contain equals to the use state so it will import the use state from that so now it will contain an object which will contain all of the properties like the name the description the price and all so now we have to define it as the name and the name will contain the default value as an empty string and then we have to define as the description and the description will also contain the default value as empty and then we have to define as the price and the price will also contain as the uh, empty string again and then we have to define as the image and the image url will contain the string here again so the image will contain as the string image string will contain the blank url and then it will contain the quantity and the quantity will contain here the blank again and then we have to define as the is featured and the is featured will contain a boolean value and it will contain it true or false so it will contain like the false in the default so if i will now save and if i will now use this input values in their values so first the text field will contain a default value so we have to define the default value equals to the like inputs dot name so now it will contain the inputs dot name and in the description it will contain the value as the inputs dot description of the product and now we have to define here the image also from that description price and now it will contain the price text field like value and it will equals to the price dot price and it will contain the image so now image is not here so i will copy this and i will duplicate this here again so then this will contain like the image and it will be equals to the uh, name equals to the price so it will contain the image now so name equals to the image so then it will contain the uh, quantity will contain the uh, uh, value will be equals to the like the input state inputs dot quantity in that and then we have to define here the checkbox so now we have to get the values from every text field and for that first we have to define a function and it will update the values of the set input field and it will update all the values like name description price and quantity like we have defined the name here also here also so it will update the names and the property values to all the fields here so first we have to define a function and it will contain the handle change so the const handle change and it will be equals to a function and it will contain a parameter as the event and we have to define the function as arrow function here so so it will contain an arrow function and now we have to define a on change prop in every text field so that whenever any input field value will change so it will go to this function and it will update the value from the respective property like the name so whenever the name will change like here we have defined the name so the whenever the name will change so it will update the name property here with the data and whenever the description will change so it will go to the handle change again so it will go to the description field and it will update the description and for that first we have to define the on change to every text field so it will contain the on change equals to the handle change it will automatically give it the event property in that so we have to define the on change 
to every input field so it will get into the handle change again handle change so we have to define in every text field here and then and then if now we have to define the function and now in the function now we have to give the values at the set input and it will contain the set input here so now so now the set input will update the values to the input state object so set inputs now we have to grab the previous state in that so first we have to define the set inputs and it will contain the function but we have to get the previous state also like whenever the name field will change like if it will change the name as nikh so the nikh will be stored in that and then we have to update the new values with the previous values also and for that we have to define the previous state like like it will contain a variable as the previous state and it will contain an arrow function inside it a callback function inside it and then we have to define here first like this so it will contain a previous state and it will update the values from that so now it is in the object so it will contain with the spread operator and the spread operator first will contain the previous state we have defined in that and then it will contain the second values like second it will contain the property name like like this is the property description to access the property in the object and to access the property it will go to the event like e parameter that we have got event dot target dot name and the event dot target dot name so whenever it will go like the name like first it will go to the name it will go to the name so its name is the name and it will go to the set inputs name so the set inputs name is also the name so it will update the value of the set input field from that from this name so they all are connected now so the set input field field will contain the event dot target dot value which is a default method in javascript to get the values of every object like event dot target dot value so if i will now save and if i will now just console dot log that which input field is now contained low if i will now console dot log and it will contain like event dot target dot name and it will contain like the empty space and it will contain the event dot target dot value so if i will now save then you will see it will show you that which input field is now changed so so if i will now change this so so if i will now update this so if i will now give a value as this as the a so then you will see the name contain the a so if i will now give the value of the description so then you will see description a if i will now give the value of price then you will see price e the number equals to the e the number equals to the 5 so so if i will now update the value of this name so if i will now contain the double a triple a so then you will see previous state is also there in the a so this will contain the previous state from three dots so previous state is also there and then it will append the new value to the object property so then this is how can we update the value so if i will now remove this console.log now and now we have to define the on submit prop to the form so i will define the on submit so whenever the form will be submitted so the on submit prop will run and we will point the function to that and it will be the submit handler so it will be the submit handler to that so if i will now send the request so if i will now create a function like const submit handler and it will be equals to the submit handler function and it will contain the event as the parameter and it will be acting like an arrow functions we have to define here the like event dot prevent default and the prevent default will prevent the browser to refresh the page whenever the form will be submitted so it will contain the event dot prevent default so if i will now save this and now we have to define a button here at the end of the form and the button will contain as the type equal to the submit so we have to go to the react and then we have to select here the button component from the material ui so i will copy this button component like the contain button so if i will now copy that and if i will now go and if i will now paste this button component before the form and the variant equals to contain the text will contain as the submit and the type will also be the submit so now we have to define here the console.log to the inputs now so now i have defined here the console.log to input so whenever we will submit the form it will show us all of the input field values with the inputs so now if i will now save then if i will now go to the so now if i will now go here so if i will now define here like the product one and it will contain the description like description the price equals to that and the image url is that and the quantity is like here the 12 
so if i will not define the submit so then you will see all of the details will be there like name product one image is featured now is the false so we have to fix this is featured and the name and the price so now these all are okay so now we have to define the is featured and then we have to send the request to the backend so to fix the now is featured field so we have to remove the name and then we have to give the name to the form control label and then we have to give a value as the on change with that and then we have to give a on change to that with that so now the checkbox will contain a on change prop and the on change and then we have to define here the function because now this function the handle change function will only update the text of the components like event.target.value but in the checkbox now we have to get the value from the event.target.checked so we have to get that so then we have to define the function here only so it will contain the e as the function parameter and the event value and then it will contain an arrow function an arrow function will contain as the set input fields in that and the set input arrow function will contain here the set input in that so we have to define as the set inputs and the set inputs will contain here first the previous objects like like first we have to define the previous and the previous will contain here now and the previous will be here so first we have to define here as the brackets now and then we have to define here in the objects so first it will contain the p and then it will contain the new object and the new object will contain the is featured property in that and the is featured property we have to get here from that is featured and we have to copy this property we have give this is featured property here in the strings so the is featured and then we have to save this value as the and then save this value as the event dot target dot checked so if i will now save after this it will be the checked so if i will now save then you will see it will show us the real input value so if i will not define here the input as the true so then you will see it will show us the true in the is feature so then you will see true and if i will now uncheck this so then you will see it will give us the false value so now you will see is featured is also now okay so now we have to provide a http request to that and then we have to give the same as we did in the products component and and we have to define a fetch function for that so in the submit handler we have to define here the function as the fetch handler cons it will be like the like the send product or like the send request and it will be equals to a function and it will contain again an async function so we have to define a async and it will contain a equals to with that and then we have to define here the method here and for that first we have to give here the request we have to send the request to the database so then we have to select the await and and the function from the fetch and the fetch will contain the function in that and it will contain the url like we did in the products so we have to get the url from the products so we we can get here so the url is here as the products and now after this we have to now define here the method as the second parameter so the second parameter will contain an object and it will be the method first and it will contain as the post so we have to define the method as the post and then we have to define another parameter in it and it will contain the headers so the headers in it will contain the request headers so we have to specify the headers in the request so the headers will contain as an object so so the object property will be like the content it will be then the type content dash type and then it will contain the value again in the string as the application and the json so it will contain as this it will contain the content type and then it will contain the application slash json so then we have to define here the body and the body will contain the data which we have got in the input fields so we have to define the body and it will contain the data like and and now we have to stringify the data from the json also so so we have to define here the stringify method here with that and it will contain the json dot stringify and it will stringify all of the object properties and methods in that and the values in that and it will contain a, an object again so the name in the database is like the name and then the name value will contain as the inputs dot name so the name will contain the inputs dot name and then we have to define here the description 
and the description will contain the inputs dot description so it will contain the description of the inputs and then it will contain the price and the price will also contain as the inputs dot price and the price in database is a number field so we have to wrap this in the number so we have to convert it into a number you have to type here the number and then the brackets so it will convert the field into a number field so then you have to define here the image url and it is a inputs dot image and then we have to define here the quantity and the quantity will contain the inputs dot quantity and and it is a number field so we have to define here the number field again as a number we have to convert it to number the number will contain inputs or quantity and then we have to define here the is featured again and the is feature will will contain the boolean value it will contain the boolean and the boolean will contain inputs dot is featured so then we can define here the promises also so after the send request function so after the await function so we have to define here the then statement so we can define here the then so after the request will be sent so the response parameter will be given and the response and we will convert the response to the json so it will the response dot json and then you will see we have to send here the again then and the then will contain again as the history like if i will not define here as the history if i will now import the history from that like const history equals to the use history and the use history we will import it from the react router dom use history from the react router dom and the use history is here and then we have to define here as the history parameter like use history and it will contain the reference of the use history and then we have to define here the use history like history dot push and it will push to the products page like to the products so now it will push us after the request to the products page and then we have to specify a catch also like if there is an error so it will send us the catch error in that so in the catch we have to define the error parameter and then we will just console dot log the error so if i will now save and if i will now run this function after this so if i will now run this function the send request function so it will be the send request so if i will now save and if i will now just console.log or if i will now just save again then you will see there is no any error and now we have to go to the backend server and then we have to start server again so if i will now start the server and now if i will now send the request from the front end so it should show me that the products added so if i will now send the request from that from this function like the first it will be the product for and the product description is there the price equals to this image equals to the this and now the quantity equals to the 1 2 3 the is feature equals to the true so if i will now send so then you will see we are now located to the product space and now you will see the product for is ready there so so guys now the add operation is done and now it's time to create the product detail operation and now the for the detail operation first we have to create a new component with the new file with the product detail dot js the product detail and now we have built the product detail dot js and now we have to build the css file also so we can create a css file also and now for the detail of the product now we have to fetch the product from the url which will contain the id of the product we are sending here the id equals to the key but now we will send here the actual product id which will be the product dot and it will be underscore id which mongodb gives us so now we will send the product id and now we have to get the id in the product detail component and for that first we have to build a new route and the route will contain that id so for that first we have to go to the product.js and then we have to provide here the details and for the edit function we have to provide a link instead of the button it will directly go to the product detail component i will import here the link like import it will contain from the react router dom so it will be the it will be the link from that 
So now we have to send here the link from the edit button. And now we have to wrap the link inside the button component. So I will create a link here. It may contain the link. And then the link will contain a two prop. And two prop will contain this side and ID of the product. And to provide an ID, we have to use here the curly brace and we have to use here the template details. And it will go to the slash products as well as slash product and it will go to slash product ID and the product ID we have to give from the props and we are getting the product ID from the products like from the products.js we are getting this product ID equals to key and then we have to provide here the real ID instead of the key and to provide the real ID we have to use a product product dot underscore ID this the MongoDB gives us so we are now providing the ID as the product dot ID so we have to use here the ID as the like product or like the props dot ID. So now it will go to the props dot ID and now then we can only show this ID to that and, and then we can also send here the link. So if I will now send here as the edit here. So if I will now save then you will see this will be now as the link. So now this will show me the edit here. So now we have to define a route in the app dot here. So whenever we will go to this lounge like if i will now click on this edit so so then you will see now we are moving to the id here so because of this if i if i will select this id then i will go to this id so now we are going to the id so now we have to go to the products dot the main app dot js and then we have to define here the main route from that we will get this id from the url and then we will show the detailed product here and then we can edit the products from their page from the page itself so if I will now send here, create a new ID, if I will copy this and if I will just paste here again and this will contain as the product and then this will contain slash and it will call an ID and the colon is used to add the parameter between the URLs and we can get the parameters via the uh, use params in the uh, React Router DOM hook. So it will contain the product detail. So then it will contain the product detail component. If I will now go to this product detail component it will import the or we have to import the product detail component so whenever the route will go to the product slash this id so it will go to the product detail component so if i will now save and if i will now move on to the product detail component and now we have to get the id from the url and to get the id from the url we have first to import the use params hook from the react router dom so i will import the import from the react router dom so I will import here the use params. So then we have to get the ID from the params. So I will get ID like const ID equals to the now it will contain the use params dot ID the use param functions dot ID. So now it will contain the ID which we are sending here. So if we are sending here only the ID, so it will get the ID. But, but if I will select the PID or any ID like PID, so we have to give here the PID. So it will contain the PID in that. So then we have to use here the product component. So now we have to go to the product details. And then if I will just display this ID to the user, like if I will just display like this, his product ID. and the ID will display is like the ID. So if I will now save, then I should see the ID here in the product. So now you will see this is the ID which we are getting in the URL. So now it's time to fetch the product from the database from this ID. So accept the return statement. I will just remove this and I, and I will create a div. So now we have already uh, created a get request in the products.js. So we have to go to the product.js and if I will copy this use effect function there and if I will now paste this use effect function in that in the product detail component. So if I will just pay, paste and if I will just import the use effect from the react and I have to import the use effect and then you will see now we have the use effect here and now we have to define here the use state also and the use state and the use state now will contain two parameters and it will contain the product only the single product and there will be a function that your const use state like const product and the set product will be equals to to here the use state and the use state will contain 
they are the default and the empty object so it will contain the set product and the set products will be there instead of the set products so it will contain the set product and the data dot product and now it will be the data dot product and now we have to provide here the id also and to provide the id we have to remove the strings and we have to use the template details here so and then we have to provide here the template details and then we have to provide here the id and the id will contain in the expression so it will be the id and now if i will define here the product like if we have the product if we have the now the product here and then we have to render here the id like him so if i will define here the product dot name so if i will now save so whenever we will have the product then this code will be rendered so if i will now save then you will see product for now we have and now we have the product and now we have to update the product from the url and now we have to go to the home.js and i will copy the form we have had there so if i will now copy this form from here and if i will now use here the same form and if i will now copy this if i will now go to the product detail after this div if i will now create another form like this if i will just create another div which will be update form so if i will now save and if i will now add the form component inside it so then you will see the text field is there if i will now import the text field from the material ui and if i will now import the form control label from the material ui and if i will now import the checkbox and buttons from the material ui and if i will now import this and and then button from and the checkbox from the material ui so if i will now save then you will see it will give us an error like on the on change we have here the function so we have to select here the handle change here so we have to create a handle change function here after the use effect const handle change and it will be equals to function and this will contain an arrow function with a parameter event inside it so then you will see the inputs is not defined so we have to define the inputs so first we are defining the products and for that we can define here the inputs also but here if i will define here the inputs as the const inputs like in the use state and the set inputs and it will be equals to the use state and the use state will contain an object and the object will contain this time the blank and this time we will create the inputs dynamically and to create the inputs dynamically first we have to set the products like in the then statement in the fetch handler so we have to set the product if i will wrap this inside the curly braces so after the set products and then we have to wrap the products like set inputs like now we will set inputs to the uh, products and the default inputs will be created as the name so the name value will be created as the uh, uh, the data like it will contain the data dot product dot name so i will copy the data dot product so the description and now the description will contain description and it will contain as the data dot product dot description and same for the price data dot product dot price and now it will contain the image it will contain data dot product dot image url and then it will contain this feature this feature will contain the data dot product dot is featured so if i will now save then you will see product for product description the outline this and the image url and all is there so the image url and quantity is not there so we have to fix that and we have shown the is featured is there so if i will now remove the uh, if i will now check this like the why the image url and the and the quantity is not coming so we have to see the back end here and then you will see we are giving here the uh, we are now giving here the image url so we have to see the image url here so we have to provide the image url so i will provide here the image as the image url will the image url so if i will now save again then you will see image will be there so now you will see the url will be there so now to update these forms and now we have to send the request to the backend now and for that first we have to design the uh, first we have to align the form and to align the form it will be the update form 
so we have to go to the product detail dot css and we have to define the alignment of it and first it will contain margin of 10 percent from all sides and it will contain padding of 10 pixels again from all the sides so if i will now save and if i will now import the product detail dot css in the product detail file so it will contain import product detail dot css so if i will now save so now the alignment is okay so now we have to define here the outlined and all so for that first we have to define the outlined and all so it will contain the label as it will contain the price it will contain the it will contain the image it will contain the image inside it it will contain the uh, and this have to configure the like the price we have to configure the description so the description will contain here the description in the label and it will contain the name as the name in the label so it will contain the name so if i will now save then you will see the name description and all will be there like the name description the price image and the label and, and we have to define the label here as the is featured so it will contain the is featured so now we have to get the updated values from the text fields and for that we have to go to the product detail component and we have to specify the function in the handle chain so the function will be the it will just set inputs against as we did in the uh, product add components and it will contain the previous state of the function first contain the previous state and then it will contain here the new state and after that we have to provide a value of this in an object and the object will contain the previous state first and then it will contain and then we have to provide here the updated state with the event with the property of the event dot target dot name and the value will be and the value will be again the event dot target dot value so whenever any input field will change so this will act as a this will update the name like when whenever the name will change it will see the name that name is changed and now it will see the value of it and it will update it so now if i will now save then i should see all of the details here so if i will now save and if i will now in the submit handler if i will just console.log the inputs here then i should see the updated inputs here so if i will now save and if i will now run again if i will now add the product 4 as the product 5 like the product 5 and if i will now add in the description like it is the updated description so if i will now save then you will see in the console window if i will now inspect this so the details will be shown in the console window so if i will now save then you will see this is an object and this contains the description as the updated description product 5 and the details as the old so these are how can we do the updates so now we have to send the http request to the database to update the product in the database and for that we have to add here the like the http request so we, we can get the same http request that we have sent in the home component to to add the product so if i will now get this function the send request function and if i will now copy this function if i will now paste in the product detail in the submit handler so it will contain the function so then we have to send here the local host 5000 products and then it will be the products and it will the slash and the products id and the products id which will contain we send here so i will remove here the simple strings and i will add here the template details and this id will will be contained as the product id so we have to provide the id here that we have got from the id here this id so we have to give this id and then the method will be now the patch and the request will be the same like input dos name description and all so content type is there headers are there stringify body is there and now the all is there and now we have to send this and now we have to push to the products to the updated products so if i will now save and now we have to run this product and if i will now run this function the send request function after this if i will now copy that and if i will now run after this request so then if i will now save then i should see there is no any errors there so then you will see i should see there is no any error so if i will now update the product like this contains a mobile and this contained a description as a description like there is a new mobile and this contains a price equals to the 5000 and this contains a sample image and if i will now submit the request then i should see it will go to the main component so now you will see this is the mobile 
and this is the details of the mobile so if i will go to edit so then you will see this is the detail so if i will now pick a real image and if i will now create some more components with it so i have to go to the image so if i will now add this link in the image so if i will now submit the request then i should see there should be an email but the image is not coming so we have to go to the product component product.js and we have to select the props.image as the source and we have to select the image equals to the props.image and we have to check this where it is coming it is coming from the products.js and we are sending the image or not products.image and now we have to send here the image url for the image url so if i will now send this and you will see image should be there in that so now you will see the image is there and now we have to just and now we have just to delete the product and to delete the product we have to go to the product.j and now to delete the product now we have to define another on click to this function and we have to define the function after on click on click will be equals to delete handler and we have to provide a delete handler function with that so if i will go before the return statement cons delete handler equals to the arrow function and it will contain an async function again async and now we will use the await and it will use the await and we have to fetch the request again it will be the fetch we have to fetch the url and it will contain the template data so http localhost at the rate 5000 and we have to send the request slash products and we have to give the id and the id we will get from the products and we are sending the product id equals to the id so we, we can get this id from here and if i will now select this id here is the props dot id and then it will delete the product and then we have to define an object here and the object will contain a method and the method now will be the delete so it will get the delete and now we have to send this request and then we can use here the then statements like then and after the then there will be the response and we have to convert the response to the json as we did in the whole project and now it will do as a then again and and it will now import the history from the react outer dom so we have to import the history again use history and we have to get the history from the history function like cons history will be equals to use history so if i will now save and if i will now give here the history equals to then we have to provide a callback function we have to provide the history like history and it will be the history dot push and it will move on to the slash product so history dot push and the slash product and then we have to use the catch statement so it will the catch and if there is an error so it will just console dot log dot log the error so if i will now save and if i will now go to the products file so if i will now click on the delete then you will see it is now deleted so then if I will now select here the delete, so then you will see it is now deleted. So now the whole CRUD operation is completed. And now we have to fix some things like there is some name and app description in the home component. So in the home, if I will define here some the home.js, if I will define some labels from here like the outline, it will be the name and it will be like the and it will contain the description and it will contain the and and it will contain the price the label equals to the price and it will contain the and it will contain the image so it will contain label equals to image url and quantity we haven't defined so i i will remove the quantity from this and from that also i will remove the quantity so we have to remove this and from there there also i will remove the quantity so then if I will now define here like the is featured in that label like is featured. So if I will now save it and if I will now send the request again. So then you will see this contain the name description price image URL. So so it will be like the name equals to the like Android. And it contains the new phone. And the price will contain the 5000 rupees. And the image URL will contain this and, and this is a feature. So if I will now send the request, so then you will see mobile is there now. This Android is there. So if I will now design here some buttons here also and to edit this button, so we can use here the material UI buttons. So we have to use here the product and then we have to select here and then we have to remove here the simple button and we have to import the material UI button. So if I will just import the 
material UI button from that so it will look good like the button and from that also it will contain like the button and this also it will contain the button so if I will now save then you will see it will look good the delete is looking good and the added this header lining inside it so if I will define a class name I will use the class name and it will be equals to the like the link URL it will be the link URL and if I will now define the link URL in and if I will define a color equals to the blue so if I will now save then you will see color equals to the blue and now the delete and ok and now the delete color is good and the added color is good now so if I will now click on this added so now you will see everything is working now so so guys this is our project that we have built and we have created the backend and then we have created the front end so guys this is our project and guys for the final thing it is the responsive project so if you will check it is responsive or else so you can check by reducing the chrome window so you can check by going to the products and if you will increase the window so then you will see it is fully responsive project so now so guys this is our project